Welcome back to another episode of Grow. I'm your host, Desarte Yarnway, Head of Community at Altruist. And today I am super excited about our guest. He's a friend of mine, um, somebody that I admire in the space, a specialist when it comes to retirement planning. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you all to Ashby Daniels. Ashby, how you doing? Great, man. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Ashby, thank you for joining us. You've had one heck of a year. I mean, just watching you over the last year, you've done things like produce two or three books, right? I've been seeing your commentary on your blog, and you've just been an inspiration and kind of like a compass for a lot of advisors that are seeking to specialize within a certain group of clients, right? And that's where I wanted to kind of take this conversation. Talk about the benefit of advisors going deep within a specific niche and how that can help you grow your practice. That's a good question. I think that the benefits, I think, are pretty straightforward. What's interesting is I started the, the specialization of retirement simply because I was passionate about that space. I wanted to, you know, I found that I just really enjoyed working with retirees and people, you know, approaching that, that transition. It doesn't hurt that people have, for ever since I was even, you know, a teenager said that I was, you know, a 60 year old in a whatever age body. Um, so, I tend to relate. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents growing up, so I was always very comfortable uh, communicating and working with people who were, uh, you know, older than me. So that was a it was a pretty comfortable space for me. But I really just enjoyed the the people. So that was what started. But then what I found was one of the one of the major benefits is simply that I don't really have to know anything else. Mm -hmm. So like I'll tell you just straight out, I don't know a lot about stock option plans, like, you know, like yeah. all your specialties, the ones that you, you have, you know, kind of built your reputation on. If I had those questions, I'd be calling you because right. I just don't know a lot about them because I don't need to know a lot about them. But if people have social security questions or Medicare questions or how to create income from a portfolio, I really know that stuff inside and out. And so it actually, one of the, I think one of the huge benefits as I'm sure you've experienced is I have to know a lot less. I know a lot more about a lot fewer things, but I know a lot less about a lot of other things. And so anytime I run into those weird situations, which is pretty rare, but you know, I call in other experts like yourself because it's not, it's not a place that I, I know a lot about, but I think that it actually ends up being just so much more time efficient because I don't have to spread myself thinly across a lot yeah. of things. And I can really concentrate on what it is that I know and love. That's awesome. And, you know, one of the things that that sparked in my mind was I asked my, my clients five fill in the blank style questions when we're talking that initial engagement. And the last question, I think it's the most important question. I say, hey, what are one to two things that you think would bring the most value out of your relationship with me and my firm? Right. Um, and I think your knowledge does that. Can you talk about how valuable that is to the person that's planning or living in retirement? Just your breadth of knowledge about the space? Absolutely. Well, you know, I'll give you, you had mentioned the books. I'll give you a really good example is one of the, one of the questions I got all the time was questions about Medicare. People making the transition into retirement, Medicare tends to be just such a, such a black box of yeah. unknowns and people really have no idea how to even approach it. So once I got that question enough times, I was like, well, maybe I should really dig in really deep and give myself, you know, a full education on the topic. So I read about five books and then I decided that, well, maybe I should just write my own book because it, everything was so spread out. Yeah. And so that's how I ended up writing the Medicare book. But that's that's a place where I could add value. And what's unique about that is I could add value without anything to sell. And so I became not just a, I ended up fielding calls from clients, friends, from, it ended up being an easy place to introduce me because I had no vested interest in the outcome. I don't sell Medicare, obviously, but I know a lot about it. So that's just one example where choosing your lane and, and choosing to go deep in that can really, can really be helpful. So this, the show is obviously called Grow, right? And you just mentioned how you're fielding uh, questions from clients, friends, coworkers, things of that nature. What does that look like, right? Now you become the Medicare specialist. You become the retirement specialist. Now, how does that yield more clients? How does that help with client acquisition? Well, certainly, just even be able to even being able to open conversations with other people that are outside of your sphere from a position of an expert rather than a position of I'm trying to find more clients being able to come in as that expert on something that is seemingly unrelated or seemingly uh, 
you know, I'm not getting any business out of it. So like, as an example, if somebody came to you and said, Hey, can you take a look and give me some ideas on what to, what, what should I know about, you know, stock options? Mm -hmm. like, that's a really powerful place to be because you have nothing to sell. You have just an expertise that people want to know about and want to ping you on. And next thing you know, those things, those, those questions become, if you know this much about X, then you probably know a ton about my other problems. Right. And so that, that ends up being a, a very popular way that these, these people who just come to you looking for even just free advice, which I'm always happy to provide, it ends up opening the door to the potential relationship right. because if they're, you know, they, most of our clients, you know, have an advisor, but guess what? Their advisor doesn't know what we know. Right. And so you become the position of authority that they begin to lean on for other questions that they might have. And then, you know, the door just opens a little bit by a little bit. Do you have a tactic for, I guess, turning those contacts into quote unquote con contracts or clients, right? So what I'm saying is, are you asking your existing clients, hey, do you have somebody that may have a similar issue as you, right? Or is anybody else retiring in your uh, atmosphere? So what does that look like? Are you asking or is this just coming to you organically? I am extremely uncomfortable asking uh, if I'm if I'm really honest. But one thing I did do is, you know, I, I referenced the the Medicare book that I wrote. Well, at the beginning of the year when that published, I sent three copies to every single client, mm -hmm. and it was an easy way for them to go to their friends who are guess what their exact age, give or take, and introduce me in a way from a position of authority. And so that's opened up a lot of the conversations or, you know, their friend will say, Hey, I read that book. Can you put me in touch? I have some questions. Yeah. And it was an unbelievably low key way to create an introduction and to give the client a way to introduce me in a way that provides tremendous value for whatever reason, a book has tremendous value. As you know, you've written more than I have, you know, a book has tremendous value. Even if somebody chooses never to open the pages, it's almost irrelevant, you know, yeah. So that has been a really good low key way for me to open the door to potential relationships. I am terrible at asking. I, I am, even though I guess people would say this is a sales profession, I am not a salesman. Yeah. And so if I can lead with value, that tends to be the easiest way for me to get in the door. I love that lead with value. One of the things that I think that you do very valuable is that you have a blog, right? It's one thing to be a specialist, but it's one thing to constantly give your clients and your prospective clients something that they can look at and say, like, this is the information that I need. Talk to us about your blog, The Retirement Field Guy. Absolutely. So that, that interestingly enough, so even these people who, you know, I've, I've fielded a ton of questions from potential clients who never came on as a client, but now they're subscribers to the blog. And I can see that, you know, I see when they, when, it, when they subscribe and it's really interesting because now I'm in their inbox every single week. So even if I'm not speaking to them hardly ever, because I don't really chase down prospects, I just don't operate like that for the same reason. I'm just not a salesperson, right. but I'm getting in their inbox each and every week. So the blog actually started as a way to communicate what I'm thinking with clients. And that's really what it's continued to be, but it's a way for me to synthesize what it is that I'm thinking about at any given time. And then also to communicate with my existing clients. I kind of viewed it as if the only people who ever read my blog are my clients, it is a win. Yeah. And I've continued to take that approach. So everything I write is, is purely with an eye towards my existing clients. And I just have found that a lot more people have, have uh, linked onto it and have decided that it's valuable enough to subscribe. And so the, the list just keeps growing. That's it's awesome. Pretty That's awesome. So for the advisor that is looking to, I guess, specialize, right, going into 2021 and continuing to specialize throughout the year, what advice could you give them? start where you feel you're really interested in. You know, I mean, I kind of jokingly say, I don't care. I don't want to know all there is to know about student loan planning or, or 529 plans or anything like that. Find an area that you feel somewhat passionate about for whatever reason. Although, you know, to kind of go the Cal Newport way, you could just pick an area that you see great potential, become an expert. And a lot of times the passion will follow. So I don't necessarily think you have to be passionate about something, even though I think that's a great place to start if it already exists. But if it doesn't exist, 
think opportunistically and then try to become the expert that and as you become the expert i almost guarantee you that the passion follows and then you can dig in deep and become that go-to person for whatever group of people it is that you're you're looking to uh you know grow your expertise in and i i do think that there's tremendous value in writing or video or whatever your medium of choice is i've done very little video um i've done zero video personally but because writing is where I'm comfortable. Writing is something that I enjoy doing. So pick a medium that really speaks to you. And then, you know, as you've done an amazing job of create content, you know, create a way, you know, I think Carl Richards calls it playing in traffic. Put yourself out there, let people find you, you know, push your stuff out there, not in a way that is overbearing, but just make sure that you're publishing and do it on a, at a regular cadence. And I think that people will find a lot of success doing it that way. Aspect. But it takes every, time. It takes time. Everything that you, every time we talk, I get something for me, right, that I can implement. And I'm sure that a lot of advisors will take away the same gems. Before I let you go, please share your social media contacts, share your website. So if advisors want to follow up with you, they can do so. Sure. So uh, my blog is just retirementfieldguide.com. Um, I actually, Desarte, just rejoined Twitter, and that's nice. at R E T field guide. So at retirement field guide, but just RET field guide uh, and, and LinkedIn. Those are the only two social channels I'm on, but everything kind of starts and ends with the blog. So that's, that's where you'll probably get more than anything else from me. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Ashby. And thank you all for watching. If you want to keep up with Altruist and the Growth Series, feel free to subscribe at altruist.com slash grow and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm your host, Desarte Yarnway with Altruist, and we'll see you here soon.